CGTN, Hong Kong, to cool 6,000 pigs after African swine fever detected. Hong Kong will cull 6,000 pigs after African swine fever was detected in the pig at a slaughterhouse. Local authorities said the infected pig was transported from southern China's Guangdong province. Officials say hundreds of thousands of pigs have been culled in a bit to stop the spread of the disease. African swine fever cannot be transmitted to humans, but is fatal to swine species, including pigs and wild boar. Farm Journal's Tyson Foods reports strong Q2 plans for ASF impacts. All right, thanks, Cindy. African swine fever now in South Africa. The country's ag ministry reporting two outbreaks were detected last month. They were found in the central province of Gauteng. That's home to the city of Johannesburg and a northern province. The ASF virus has been spreading throughout parts of Europe and Asia in the past year, causing major losses to the world's largest hog herd in China. And the head of Tyson Foods is warning the threat is real, that African swine fever could enter the U.S. An old white spoke in grave terms during a conference call about the risk that the disease could spread to U.S. pig farms. White saying, quote, I do think there is a distinct possibility it could come to the United States. African swine fever. Has anyone been following this? No. Yeah, they call it the <laughs> they call it the Ebola for pigs. Yeah. The Ebola virus. Fortune. Tyson plants to profit from tainted Chinese pork. Bloomberg P pig Ebola virus sends shockwaves through global food chains. CBS News. Tyson sees food sees benefits of swine fever ravages Chinese hog farms. Tyson Foods says it's poised to take advantage of a hog disease in China that will ripple through the global protein industry, although I can't say for sure where those benefits will start and how big they'll be. <laughs> the top U.S. meat processor said swine fever could impact the global protein industry on a level that we have never experienced. Tyson's chicken business is set to benefit from China's pig woos as consumers there like look for a cheap alternative to proteins. Yes, and I didn't realize that China produces 50% of the world's pigs. Yes. Yeah. So that's a lot of yes. pigs and a lot of food that and they I are producing. I was told that if all the pork producers produce, send all the pork to China, it wouldn't be enough to fulfill their need or something. They eat a yeah, lot of pork. Yeah. Or I think the U.S. couldn't. Or yeah. It was a lot crazy. Of, it, yeah. And very interesting. At, as of right now, you know, swine, the African swine really only affects uh, pigs, so yes. it has not mutated to jump to humans yet. So. We have more on that in a second. Actually, the USDA, let's play them. They're responding to it. Uh, African swine fever, USDA, let's go. Hello, I'm Secretary of Agriculture, Sonny Perdue. And today, I'd like to talk to you about something that threatens our pork industry, a devastating disease called African swine fever that is spreading around the world right now and affects both domestic and wild pigs. To be clear, it does not affect people, nor is it a food safety issue. Most importantly, African swine fever has never been detected in the United States. Not yet. Yeah, hopefully However, we keep it, it that way. it is a very real threat. In 2017, pork producers marketed over 120 million hogs valued at more than $20 billion. They provided about 25 billion pounds of meat to consumers worldwide. Additionally, the U.S. pork industry. Half a million jobs. Wow. And what he wants everyone to know that comes <laughs> into contact with pigs. 20 seconds. We want everyone who comes into contact with pigs, from the large farm owner to owners of a single teacup pig, and even international travelers and petting zoo visitors, to understand how easily this disease can spread and the importance of keeping our U.S. pigs free from this disease. African swine fever. Before we get into the, the PowerPoint, do you have anything else? I don't think so. You don't? I think it'll be covered by the PowerPoint. Oh, cool. Okay, Dr. Chris Ora, African swine fever, a real and present global threat, a veterinarian virology school of medicine, faculty of medical science, the University of West Indies, Trinidad and Tobago, Alan D. Lemon Swine Conference, 17th of September, 2018. There it is. Pulling up, sorry, Stalin, there you go. What's all the fuss about? And you guys all know this, of course, there's a massive, a massive amount of money and trade at stake with a virus like this. 
which is not only extremely nasty, causing very serious disease in pigs, but also if any country gets African swine fever virus, then there are severe global trade connotations. And you can see from 2007, um, the exporters of pork, the main exporters of pork, including obviously the USA, also including Belgium and Poland, who now have the disease, and many countries like Germany, like Denmark, like the Netherlands, like France, who are very, very much on the edge of African swine fever virus. And you guys also know that China produces over half the world's pork, and recently this virus uh, um, entered China, which is a very big worry, which I'll talk a little bit about in a minute. There it is. Some stuff we said. Cool chart or cool yeah. numbers you could look at. And no one comes close to China. No one comes close to China. Produces half of the world's pork. Swine fever, extremely nasty disease. An extremely nasty disease that basically is associated with blood and causes hemorrhage and edema. It basically damages the endothelial cells, so you get leakage of the blood. And what you get is blood coming out of all orifices, blood that infects everything within the pig, including all the organs. So these are the Damn. kinds of mm. pictures that we want to avoid seeing when the virus spread to various islands in Europe. This was Malta, actually, but it also spread to um, Car Caribbean islands like Haiti and Dominican Republic, where most of the pigs on the islands had to be slaughtered in the end because it was such a nasty disease. Damn. That's crazy. Yep. He goes into a brief history. Two minutes. 2007, the virus came up on a boat through the Black Sea. It came to Potty. I was actually in charge of the um, ASF reference laboratory at Perbright then, and I got the call from the Georgians who said, basically, they were saying that there were pigs dying in fields, lots and lots of pigs dying, and they were floating down the rivers. And they explained to me the clinical signs and the fact these pigs were red and they were dying so quickly. And I just said to the guy in Georgia, we really need to get samples to the lab at Perbright to diagnose this. They came within 24 hours. We diagnosed it. But the problem was uh, it had probably been present for at least weeks, if not months beforehand. So it had spread to the other Caucasian states and also spread uh, up into Russia before it had even been properly diagnosed. Jeez. So after 2007, as I say, it spread, and then in 2009, it went up to St. Petersburg in, in Russia, and then it... Yeah, it spreads before... It spreads so, so fast before know, being diagnosed. So yeah. ...spread to various areas. You can see up the yellow dots, so large distances. And this was with humans. This was with pig meat being carried. And these were isolated outbreaks that were, on the whole, snuffed out. Uh, but what happened after that is we got this massive spread in this area. And you can see these dots, green for, for wild boar oh um, and gosh. blue for domestic pigs. Yeah. And over 2011 to 2017, basically the virus became endemic in the wild boar populations um, in, uh, in, in these northern European countries in northern Russia. And what was actually happening uh, in order for the virus to spread from year to year, from season to season, um, is it was killing uh, wild boar. And those wild boar were likely to be in frozen over the winter because they have very harsh winters in these areas. And then three or four months later, uh, when the thaw came, those uh, carcasses were thawed and then they were investigated and sometimes eaten and sniffed by existing wild boar. Oh, no. And the virus continued from season to Perfectly season. Perfectly preserved. So it became pretty much endemic. It was self-perpetuating in wild boar, which it still is in those areas. That's scary. Yeah. In the chat, all it takes is the right mutation to jump to humans. That is correct. Yeah. And in the end of the world, it's very possible. We better get good at that game pandemic. We can really start <laughs> strategizing and get good at that game. Because we're not good at that game. We're not able to beat this thing. That's true. How it's spreading. We've been seeing a massive escalation of the outbreak in Europe, in Romania and moving into Bulgaria, where hundreds and hundreds of new outbreaks have been occurring in backyard pigs, especially in Romania. But also the virus has been spreading to uh, some of the uh, high biosecurity intensively farmed pigs. And actually the second biggest pig farm in the whole of Europe containing 140,000 pigs got African swine fever virus just a few weeks ago and they all had to be slaughtered. 
and they think that this probably came from, uh, from the virus coming from the water coming into this farm because people tend to dispose of pigs when they have African, they die of African swine fever virus in the rivers and, may, and they think the water may have been um, contaminated with African swine fever virus. Jeez. Holy moly. That's crazy. And then he goes into the situation in China. China is for so many reasons a big worry because of the nature of the farming, the nature of the backyard farms there, the nature of the fact that the, the, the environment is very conducive to, to wild boar being around as well. Um, also critically small farms, uh, so there's and have very, very large areas infected. And as you've seen from eight, August the 3rd all the way up to the 6th and beyond, because we've seen outbreaks all the way up to the present time that are occurring in China, this is something that uh, is an incredible worry. And there's also quite a lot of speculation at the moment that the virus might have well have come in to China in the spring, so at least three months maybe before it was officially diagnosed. And this is an incredible worry because the same thing would have happened as happened in Georgia. Um, the virus had spread uh, uh, before it had been properly diagnosed. So um, we think the same thing may have happened. That's really frightening for yep, China. One, one last clip about China. As you can see in China, in the dark red here in the top map, you can see these are areas where, there's all, where, there's the, where all the pigs are in China, and, and you see that these are the same areas where we're having the outbreaks. Incredible amounts of pigs in, there, in, in, the, in these areas. The amount of live pigs sold by these six provinces that were affected uh, reached 174 million of the nationally sold live pigs in 2017. So an enormous amount of pigs um, at risk. And then last Thursday, we saw uh, uh, the virus spread uh, uh, and, and arrive for the first time in this little corner on the, on the corner of uh, Belgium uh, and France and very close to... And this is old information from September. Oh, Germany man. ...in Luxembourg. Probably it's thought that the virus came through, through people again bringing contaminated, virus-contaminated products, maybe from Romania or Bulgaria, putting it down and wild pigs getting hold of us. We don't know. We know for certain that five wild boar have been found to have the virus, and we know that the area where the virus is is very forested, so there's a lot of wild boar around. So this is a very, very dangerous situation again. African swine fever. Are we going to have to go wild boar hunting? Now? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Helicopter, Texas <In> China? style. <laughs> I yeah. don't know what we're going to do. We're keeping an eye on it. Yeah, I'm sure. It's starting we'll... to hit the press, the mainstream. They're start people are starting to cover it a little bit more because of Tyson and their interests. So we'll see. Thank you so much for watching. For more Healthy Talk Show, please consider subscribing to our podcast over at healthytalkshow.com slash subscribe. It's free. Twitter and Instagram at Healthy Talk Show, drop the W. We record the podcast live Mondays at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time over at HealthyTalkShow.com slash live. Love and light.